For centuries, the Great Pyramids of Egypt have been shrouded in mystery and surrounded by whispers of the supernatural. These ancient structures, built over 4,500 years ago, have captured the imagination of people all around the world. But what if I told you that scientists who have studied the pyramids are left with a deep sense of fear and unease? In this video, we'll explore the most unsettling and mysterious aspects of these wonders of the world and why they continue to leave even the most skeptical scientists in a state of terror. Here are 20 reasons why the Egypt pyramids terrify scientists. Number 20. The Voids if I told you that cosmic rays were used to scan the pyramids, you'd likely wonder that I'm talking about aliens again, and the answer would be yes. No, not really. But there have been certain scans done on the Great Pyramids of Giza using special cosmic rays. That's what they're actually really called. And they've shown some interesting things that we didn't know about before. Mainly in the Pyramids of Giza, there are a couple of hidden chambers that apparently have never been touched. The largest of the two voids is located just above the Grand gallery, a passageway that leads to what may be the chamber of the pharaoh Khufu and is about 98 feet long and about 20 feet high. That's a big gap in a pyramid. The other one is smaller but no less significant because it's unclear why it's actually there. Some would think that these could be extra burial chambers or even treasure rooms. Another explanation is that they were made to help keep the pyramid in a certain position. The question also becomes that if this pyramid had these voids, do the others that we know about do as well? The mystery continues and we're not even halfway done. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. How They're Built Without a doubt, the greatest mystery that honestly terrifies people in the scientific community is how the ancient Egyptians were able to build not just the pyramids of Giza, but all of the pyramids they ever made. Remember, this was ancient Egypt, so they didn't have things like heavy machinery, conveyor belts, or certain safety equipment. They had to do this with nothing more than basic tools and people power. And that's why the mystery around the pyramids has lasted for so long, because the biggest pyramid in Giza is 481 feet high and over 750 feet wide. That's a whole lot of heavy stones to bring to the spot and slowly stack up over a period of time. It allegedly only took 60 years to make the Pyramids of Giza, which boggles everyone's minds when they think about the effort that it would take to do that. Thankfully, there are some small clues as to how the Egyptians were able to perform the task. Not surprisingly, it was based on a find that proved simple construction methods. Simply put, they found ramps on paths that led to the pyramids, and these ramps were enough to help to push the stone blocks up and into a position near them. So, if they could do that on the ground, why couldn't they do that around the pyramid? Well, they could. If you think about it being a giant platform that was sloped and would allow the stones to be pushed into position, that would mitigate the risk to the workers and ensure that they weren't exhausting themselves trying to get the stones up to where they needed to be. There's also a long-standing theory that the building materials were floated down the Nile River and then special waterways were built to take them from the river to the construction site. Granted, it doesn't explain everything, but it does paint a more clear picture of what may have happened. Number 18. Then and Now Here's something that you likely never thought about when it comes to the pyramids. Picture them based on what you've seen on television and in pictures. Do you have a clear image in your head? How would they be described? You'd probably touch on their shape, of course, but then you'd get to their coloration and texture, and that's where things get interesting. Today, they're brownish, and they have all sorts of indentions in them, and you can see the wear and tear from being exposed to the sun, the wind, and the sands of Egypt for over 4,500 years. But when they were first completed, it was an entirely different story. Now remember, the pyramids were built for a purpose well beyond what we see them as now, i.e tourist attractions and places of study. So when the Egyptians made them, they made them so that they were perfectly smooth and shined in the sun. 
That's right, they had an outer layer of limestone that caused them to shimmer. They could be seen for miles around, and the sun would likely have blinded people who looked directly upon them based in its light. But sadly, that's not how we see them today. The wear and tear is quite obvious on the stone structures, and that's a pity. Because could you even imagine if they were still in their peak form right now? And how even more marvelous they would have been to have seen up close. It's true that you could argue that their weathered sheen adds to their mystique, but you almost want to see them shining in their original form at least once, just to see it how the Egyptians witnessed it when they first constructed them. Plus, just think of the time and effort that they put into making them smooth and shiny. They would probably be horrified today to see how they've become. Number 17. Precision Building Another element to the construction of the pyramids that people love to discuss is the precision that was used in its construction. These are perfectly erected pyramids, and they're not just something that you make and hope that you get right. The Egyptians made sure that everything was as perfectly in place as possible. For example, with the pyramids of Giza, they are near perfectly aligned to the four cardinal directions. If you were to go to the pyramids, you would know pretty much which direction was north, south, east, and west. The one problem is those directions didn't even even exist in the ways that we think of them now. So how did they know to place the pyramids perfectly on those points? Simply put, they used the stars above. It's believed that the ancient Egyptians used the fall equinox to help align everything so that it was near perfect to the cardinal directions. There was even a massive test that was done to see if said equinox could even have allowed for such precision with placement. And it turns out that it can work, and since the equinox is a universal constant and thus would have been back in ancient times, the Egyptians might have used used it for their construction purposes. Now we all know that they did something along those lines as all three pyramids are placed in the exact same way. However, while this theory is promising, it cannot definitively be proven. Easily one of the most frightening things about the pyramids and Egypt itself is that despite having meticulous records about certain parts of the history, they didn't leave behind blueprints on how they constructed the pyramids. It is ironic, and that's why people are trying to dissect them from top to bottom so that they can learn every little thing possible about them so that they can get into the minds of the Egyptians. And as you may guess, it's still a work in progress, but who knows where we'll be in the future. Number 16. Who did the hard labor? Another key problem with there not being definitive proof about how the ancient Egyptians built the pyramids is that many myths and legends have popped up about them without much logic or evidence to back them up. Case in point, there's been long-standing myths that the main reason the pyramids of Giza were built in the time period that they were was because of slave labor. Now, we do know that Egyptians had slaves over the years, that much is true, but the question of whether it was slaves who did the construction of the pyramids has been heavily debated over the decades. One piece of proof that seemed to disprove the theory were tombs of the construction workers. The modest nine feet deep shafts that were found held a dozen skeletons of pyramid builders, perfectly preserved by dry sand, along with jars of beer and bread for the afterlife. You might be thinking, well, what does that all prove? Well, think about it like this. If these were slaves and were treated like dirt by the ancient Egyptians, why would they be buried so precisely in the ground and given certain things for the afterlife? Remember, in Egyptian culture, it was very important how things were buried and preserved in order to ensure safe passage into the life beyond. To be clear, they weren't mummified, they weren't important enough for that, but there was care that was put into their burials and preservation. So, why would that happen if they were slaves? Now make no mistake, it wasn't easy building those pyramids, but that's why newer theories would suggest that workers were cycled in over time and paid well for their labor. But then again, nobody knows for sure. Number 15. Cutting the Stone now we'll get back to actual materials that were used to build the pyramids. There's no doubt that the ancient Egyptians got the stones to look and be what they wanted them to be to construct them, but how did they get the stones in the shape that they wanted? For example, with the Great Pyramids of Giza, it's composed of over 2 million limestone and granite blocks, with the average stone over 2 tons. So how did they cut that rock that's known for being difficult to cut? Now look, I'm not saying it was aliens, but it was aliens. 
I'm joking of course, there are honestly real answers to this. Looking at parts of the pyramids and the areas around them, you can see staging areas where the original stones were brought in and taken down to size. Some of the clues come from scratch marks that were used by blades, others would note that special waters and other liquids were used to wither the stone in order to shape it into what they wanted. Now, if you do that long enough and get the results that you want, it's not hard to see that you can get a bunch of stones into a consistent shape and then build a pyramid. Number 14. Granite Clues when it comes to the pyramids, especially those of Giza, it's important to remember that we not only have to look at what's within the stone structures, but what's on the outside of them. Yes, it's true that the tombs of the pharaohs or others that were put in these structures are surrounded by treasures, but that doesn't explain how the pyramids were built in the first place. If you were to look at the outside of them, you'd notice that some of the pyramids' building materials might not be what you would expect. For example, in the third pyramid especially, you'll find the outer parts of the pyramid having granite. Granite, the most durable and expensive construction material in antiquity, is one of the best ways to judge the value and practices of ancient cultures because of the high cost of its use. It's true that back when they wanted things to last, they might have used something that was more durable despite the cost. Yet other pyramids in Egypt didn't have that built into them, so why were the pyramids of Giza so different? That's what many want to find out, and many even have said that these secret clues are being ignored by others due to the more treasure-ridden aspects of Egyptology. But at the very least, someone is looking at the outside of the pyramids and seeing what clues that they hold. Remember, for things such as pyramids, they weren't meant to be wonders of the world per se, they were meant to be important in the now. So every clue that we find out about them is equally important, no matter how small or what material that it's made from. Number 13. Energy Transmitters this one's going to sound like alien talk, but there were some real people thinking about what this might be as a scientific breakthrough, including Nikolai Tesla, and I'm being serious. Tesla believed that they served a higher purpose and was investigating them throughout his life. And given all the things that he created and thought out before his tragic death, you just have to wonder what potential that he saw within them. In 1905, Tesla filed a patent in the United States titled The Art of Transmitting Electrical Energy Through the Natural medium. This outlined designs for a series of generators around the world which would tap the ionosphere for energy collections. But what does that have to do with Egypt and its pyramids? Well, the designs that Tesla thought up were like the pyramids, and what's more, he believed that the pyramids were perfectly placed in Egypt, which we already know is partially true as noted earlier, and to set out to make his own towers and pyramids line up with where he thought that the Egyptian pyramids were guiding him to go. While he never completed this goal, the end result would have been a wireless transmission of energy, something that Tesla worked most of his life in order to complete. Number 12. Ancient Tombs now let's step away from Giza for a moment and look at another pyramid of Egypt that got a lot of attention. In 2020, an ancient burial ground with 27 coffins was discovered near the Step Pyramid in Saqqara. They were buried over 2,500 years ago and were undisturbed when they were found by archaeologists. The Saqqara area once had at least 11 pyramids, including the Step, and it also held hundreds of tombs of ancient officials ranging from the First Dynasty to the Coptic period. As for why this is interesting, you should already know the answer to that. When it comes to Egyptology, one of the best finds that you can have is discovering an ancient tomb, coffin, sarcophagus, or even something in between. Every body and burial chamber is its own look into the history of Egypt and all that it offered at one point in time. You can learn a lot from who was left behind, and with 27 coffins to be looked into, that's a whole lot of answers that could potentially get dropped. Even the team was eager to see what secrets were ready to be found by them. Number 11. The Robot 
In 2020, archaeologists used a small robot to work its way through a shaft in a pyramid to see what it was like inside of it. That shaft would lead into the Queen's Chamber, and said shaft was honestly the only way through it, as it was tied to a false wall that had damaged the pyramid. Even the team behind the robot noted that they had hard times making it and making it do the job because of the tight parameters that they had to work within. When the robot made it to the end of the shaft, it used special cameras to record what was on the other side. And to their surprise, it was a room with symbols painted everywhere. It also found another stone that the team couldn't get past, and that meant that there's even more mysteries to be discovered that we haven't been able to access yet. Clearly, these pyramids are much more than anyone felt they would be, which is both great and terrifying. Number 10. Getting the Stones Moved as I briefly touched on before, one of the biggest mysteries around the pyramids as a whole is how the Egyptians were able to get the stones that they wanted to the site that they built on. But how did they get the stones out of the ground? Well, that was apparently revealed by an obelisk that was found within the ground itself. These were special areas dug within the spot where the stones were, and it allowed the Egyptians to do something special. Well, you might have thought that they'd used manpower to lift the stones out of the ground, but with the special passageways that they made in the rock quarries, they could simply push the rocks along the ground and use things like ramps in order to get them where they needed to go, using that engineering genius to their benefit all the long. Number 9. Timeline I also noted earlier that the belief about the timeline of the Pyramid of Giza was said to be about 60 years. However, if you look at other sources, you may get some different answers. The reason for this is tied to the mystery of the pyramids. There are no definitive records about when it was started and finished. Now, we do know that it was made for the pharaoh known as Khufu, and later on, two others that adorned the space were made. One for his son, and another one for his grandson. So, these pyramids were a family affair, as you can see. and it's only based on estimates that we can say the first one was finished between 2560 BC and 2540 BC, but thanks to the lack of records, it's hard to know for sure. We can't build a time machine fast enough in order to figure these things out. Number 8. The Speed of Light now, I'm not going to make a joke about how the pyramids can travel at the speed of light. That would be stupid, even for us. However, the pyramids do have a connection to the speed of light. You see, some enthusiasts have noticed that the number of the coordinates of the Great Pyramid of Giza matches up perfectly with the speed of light, and they say that it's just a little more than a coincidence. However, we already know that the Egyptians were able to point their behemoth at true north and align to the points to be cardinal directions, but how could they have perfectly placed it to match the speed of light? Some would say that it's just a coincidence, but how can we know for sure? Also, that would be one heck of a coincidence, wouldn't you agree? Number 7. The Sphinx are you tired of this pyramid talk yet? Well, I'm going to give you a little detour to the other great monument of Egypt, the Sphinx. This massive stone structure has withstood the test of time and stands as another marvel of engineering. The statue was created out of limestone on the Giza Plateau, which is on the west bank of the Nile in Giza. It's been widely believed to be tied to Khafra, who, if you recall, is the son of the ruler who ordered the pyramid of Giza to be made. But here's the twist. The Sphinx is is not its true name. No one really knows what the true name is. Much like the pyramids, there are very few records about the Sphinx and its construction, so its name only came about around 2,000 years ago. Now forget the Misery Loves Company, I think it should be Mysteries Love Company. Number 6. The Pyramid Texts Easily one of the biggest discoveries from within the pyramids are that of the hieroglyphics that revealed much of its history of the ancient kingdoms and those who were buried within. These pyramid texts have been meticulously deciphered over the years and have painted a more clear picture of what went on in ancient times. For example, some of what was written in the burial chambers were spells that were designed to free the souls of the pharaohs that were buried there. There were also stories of exploits of the ruler for when he passed on, so that the gods would know about what they did for the kingdom.
The gods are also mentioned in these texts. Over 200 of them have been found within. It's possible that there are more of these texts hidden within the pyramids, which is why more people are eager to see every nook and cranny of the spaces. Number 5. Cave System Given that the pyramids are such a big deal, people often look on the outside and see the inside of the structures to find the truth that is hidden. But what about below the pyramids and the region that they're on? One British explorer would say that he had found a massive cave system that was directly tied to the pyramids themselves, even claiming that they were the pharaoh's underworld. He found these caves after reading the logs of a previous explorer and finding a crack within a tomb that led to a cave system. These caves were never documented outside of those logs, and thus they do make quite a fascinating discovery. The explorer would write about the caves in a book, and it just makes you wonder what else is in the area waiting to be explored. Number 4. Sides Here's a pop quiz. How many sides are on the Great Pyramids of Giza? Think carefully before you answer. Did you say four? Because if you did, you would be incorrect. Well, technically incorrect, with as in all things, it's about a certain point of view. Because there have been many who have noted that while the pyramids look perfectly flat on their bottom layer to give the presentation of a four-sided entity, If you look at them from an angle or above, you'll notice that the pyramids have a curvature to them that bends inward. And when you look at it from the right angle, you'll see that the spots go to a point, and that point makes it to where the pyramids actually have eight sides instead of four. So why is that so terrifying? Well, that's because it doubles the size of the pyramids. Number three, lopsided. And if you think I'm done with tiny details, well, the Great Pyramid of Giza is actually lopsided. Now, it is true that it was designed to point true north, but apparently the builders made a mistake, and it's ever so slightly lopsided. This west side of the pyramid is slightly longer than the east, but what does it prove? Well, it doesn't really prove much of anything. Scientists take it as a relief to our own engineering faults. because we've screwed up plenty of times in the modern day with our construction, as we've noted many times on this channel. And it's wonderful to know that the brilliance of the ancient Egyptians did have some weak points. Look, sometimes it's nice to know that humanity consistently screws up, and it takes the pressure off of the rest of us. Number 2. Geometry now, if you're bored at this point, and if the entries are not satisfying enough for you, well, guess what? I'm taking you back to school to talk about geometry, something even more boring. Specifically, I'm talking about the geometry that was used to create the pyramids, because those who have studied it believe that the ancient Egyptians used some special formulas and geometry to construct them for unknown reasons. For example, you can find instances in the golden ratio and the pi sequence within the pyramids, and when you add that to some of the other mathematical and scientific things that we've talked about, you have to wonder just how much they tried to line things up to look a certain way. Number 1. Why? Given all the mysteries that have been left behind, you do have to wonder why the Egyptians would build such a massive structure. The answer is one that we've talked about already, that being the afterlife. The Egyptians absolutely believed in the afterlife, and they wanted to make sure that they honored the dead, specifically the leaders of the nation, and sent them off properly into the next phase of their life. These structures were made likely to be perfect conduits to carry the souls of those within the place beyond with the gods and those that had come before them. As history has shown time and again, people will go to great lengths to honor their beliefs and traditions. That's all from the realm of Egypt and its pyramids and how we still don't know everything that's going on with them. Are you shocked that we still don't know the truth about them by now? And do you think we'll ever know everything about the pyramids? Or is it our only hope that Doctor Who shows up and takes us back in time? Let me know all about it in the comments section down below. Be sure to check out the other cool things that are showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.